Hey there, today we are going to rate the GDKO 2024 round 5 submissions. This round is all about user interface and user experience. So let's get started. So let's change the screen and we are going to start with Animax Clash of Catbot. <laughs> uh, let's go there. nice so this is the well this is the game itself right so this is the the user interface of the game uh yeah so the the landing page is actually very good very well polished but well we are not here to judge the the landing page right so let's see the instructions here click the vhs set click the settings button okay Explore Catbot City until you get bored. <laughs> well, not a promising experience. Yep, that's the whole incredible game right now. <laughs> Might do more in the future. Credits, okay. So, what? My polish was... Cartoon intro. This h.io page in the Wikipedia article. What? Story code, story. Okay, so we have a. The intro was storyboarded and edited by me in Adobe Premiere. Three renders. Damn, this was made. In two weeks. Okay, we have a. It it looks like a very good animation from the the description, right? So. Let, yeah, let's play this game because we are not here to judge the landing page, right? Right, so search the case. Yeah, so we read these instructions. Well, very responsive. Nice. So the, the step by step thing is very good because this person could basically just allow us to click and and do the the whole animation instead of allowing us to, to interact step by step Man, no way this was made in two weeks is the music made in two weeks as well? well this is not um, this has nothing to do with user interface, maybe with user experience, but god damn, this is, this is so nice. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Man, congratulations to this person. So yeah, we we don't have much to do here. So we have a lot of buttons that we can't press or we can't interact with. Yeah. Okay, so this is the whole interface. Settings. Okay, nice. Sword, jump. I, I like the... We have those arrows pointing out to... Uh, to where they, they refer to. Yeah, pretty nice. But we don't have much gameplay here, right? So well, let's let's start the rating. How quick did the audiovisual feedback happens upon players' interaction? Well, it happens pretty quick, as we could see when uh, I was playing with the VHS. So yeah, I think that I will go with a. Pretty much. Oh, you, you can see that we have a a light here to tell the the two states of the settings button. So off and on. Very nice. And it's very responsible as well. So I think that I will go with a five stars on how quick did the audio visual in feed feedback happens. How well did the GUI user experience strengthens the game concept? Okay, so as far as I could understand from the game concept, this is to resemble 
to give the idea that you are watching or at least interacting with one of these 80s shows about mechas, something like Transformers or something like this. And the whole design uh, sets very well this experience. So I think that the user interface and the, the experience of like taking out the VHS cassette and inserting in the in the in the TV, yeah, it's it gives a lot of support to this concept. So I think that I will it with five as well. Uh, how well did the GUI stand out from other games? Well, I don't know the other games, but <laughs> uh, I think that it, it will be kind of hard. Well. We have to, to take things slowly here because the user interface is not this drawing, is not this picture. I think that the actual user interface, how I interact with the game is basically just the settings and the settings are very well done here. Uh, the other buttons doesn't don't work and well, I I found this one nice, but I wouldn't say it is like a five. I will I will go with a f stand out. Yeah, the user interface itself doesn't stand out a lot because we just have these settings, right? But yeah, it's very good. It's very well drawn. I, I'll I'll give it four stars. How cohesive were the user interface, status screen, menus, and other non gameplays? gameplay elements. So if you are not taking any gameplay elements here into account, I think that I will go with a five. Everything here sets up a cohesive experience. So I think that, yeah, definitely a, a five in that sense. How well polished was the game user interface and other non gameplay elements? Well, this one is also a five because everything here seems to be very well, well polished this person was very smart because in this round you are not judging the gameplay itself so they invested into the whole experience behind the game the animation for instance uh, is something that sets up the the ground for the user experience and well i think that i will go with a since there, there are not many elements here for instance we can't interact with the other buttons on the TV, there is nothing else on the scenario to interact with. Um, I think that I will give it a four. Yeah, a four. Well, let's go to the next one, Magic Tech. Let's open in another tab here. <laughs> yeah, like that. The cover, the cover image doesn't seems very well promising. So yeah, the landing page as well is well. I'm. We're not here to judge the landing page, but we can see that we have a, a negative comment right here. I didn't get it in my making potions. Well, let's see. Run the game. Oh, it seems to be made with Godot. Was it made with Godot engine? Do we have access to this information? Yeah, Godot engine, okay. Uh, yeah, man. Play. <laughs> Well, the interface seems to be respons responsive, but I don't like that <laughs> the, the text is very small. I, I can't even read it. John finds a peculiar room. John encounters a drive. Okay. So, yeah, I don't like that we can't even scale up things. There is no button to put the game on full screen. Not very well. Promising. Oh, can we brew potions? Nice. <laughs> Where did the thing. What, what happened here? Still selected, so well. It, it just popped there on the cauldron. 
yeah, the, there's not much information given to the player, so can we let me test something? Yeah, this is very inconsistent, right? So you can see that I can either just click and click on the cauldron, or I can drag and drop. So there is no consistency in this behavior because you have to choose one of, of these two. So either I click and then I click on the cauldron and this should be very clear to the player that this is the next step that they should do. So if I click here, something like a highlight the cauldron next would be something that could be done if you go with this direction, but definitely dragging and dropping would be the the more natural thing to do yeah definitely so you can see that I, i'm just naturally dragging and dropping things into the cauldron because this is what makes more sense right yeah. valid recipe where can i found a a valid recipe is it written somewhere drone finds a peculiar room drone drone, drone we have drone so maybe it's this way create drone okay. drag a drone body here well at least this this time there is a structure telling us to drag There is no instruction after, after dragging the body. Is it here? Yeah. I mean, uh, let's just not spend too much time on this. So, um, there is no button to cancel. Can I just not do a drone? And, and back to the previous menu. No, there's no. Yeah, so I will definitely add a button to cancel the interaction instead of just deleting the what whatever is in the table. Yeah, man. So what I will do with with this game is make things more clear. Well, let's go to the rating, right? Um, how quick did the audiovisual feedback happens upon player interaction? Well, it happens pretty... Man, I don't know. It happens quick, but it's not consistent. So, for instance, I don't know what to do here. <laughs> it's very quick, quick, just... Select. Well, man, let's, let's give a... Three stars just because things highlight quick. <laughs> just because of that. Um, how well did the GUI user experience strengthen the game concept? Yeah, not much. So, for instance, as far as you could understand, this is a mix of an alchemy, alchemist and a bot tech guy. So, instead of just having things on the table, I don't know if this is meant to be a manual, or something like if this part is the something like a, a heads up display like a hood or something like that or if this is part of the game scenario well what I would do in this case is that I would just separate these two these three places into rooms in this house so we we'll, we would have something like in uh, potion craft if I'm not mistaken where you, we have some arrows that will basically just communicate that we can move to other places in the house and I will have a, an alchemy lab and then a tech lab, a tech room for the drones and I think that this would communicate better this to... yeah I think that this will communicate better the, the two sides of this game so regarding how well the, the GUI strengthened the game concept not very much I will give two star three stars three stars just because at least the items make sense 
How well did the game UI stand out from other games? Not very well. Not at all, so one star. How cohesive were the game user interface, at the title screen, menus, and other non gameplay elements? Not much. We saw that, well, there are some contradictions in the, in the game itself, so I can click and pop, and I can also drag and drop. But if I click and pop, there is nothing telling me what to do after selecting an ingredient, so yeah, not very much, I'll give it a 2 stars as well. Um, how, how well polished was the game user interface and other non-gameplay elements? Not very well, not very well, we don't have, as I said, I don't even know if this is the, the HUD or if this is part of the game. Yeah, not very well, so one star as well. Okay, up to the next one, Memory, Memory, me, Memento Mori, <laughs> Memory, made with Unity, well I didn't like that, <laughs> I just kidding. Oh yeah, the landing page looks good already. Some compliments, nice. How to play, try to remember the symbols, flip the cars, be careful not to flip a dead car, a death car, if you have three X's and make another incorrect match, okay. So yeah, it's basically, <laughs> it's basically a memory game, right, so not, I, I like the, the pun, <laughs> I like that. Run game. Yeah, I like that the before even loading the game there is something to mm, nice. Nice. Like I like that. Let's decrease So even though the, the settings are simple, uh, they are nicely presented, right? So we just have like music and sound effects, but they are the, the interface makes sense and it's very consistent with everything else, so really nice. Okay. Can I end free sound? Okay, so credits <laughs> I, I don't know if this was on purpose but um, yeah rarely very rarely things are done without a reason in games in game development so you can see that the game is basically a memory game right so if I want to remember who, who whoever made the code I have to basically just play the game because I have to review who, who did uh, the, the. I have to review the card to see the, the person responsible for each one of these areas. So I think that this integrates very well with the game concept already. So yeah, this person is making a, a, a nice job on that. The time is gone, mortal. <laughs> oh, okay. So this. You can see that there is no highlight saying that I'm hovering the the next button, which makes me think that. Well, l let's make a test here. Nice. So the button the button reacted to one of my interactions, even though the mouse wasn't hovering it. So I think that the whole game is a, a narrative that we can try to move on, but it actually communicates that you press the button even though you didn't but this is just an observation whoever well, we have been greeted with chance <sighs> pathetic <life. laughs> you, you just have to win a simple game yeah so this is the confirmation but you can see how well this game communicated the 
the gameplay just with the game user interface. Even before the game said that this will be a game about memory. Yeah, well, I, I read it here. Yeah, but the whole game concept already, the, the name of the game, the title, everything else, communicates that this will be a game about memory. <laughs> so there's this saying like Greek or Roman saying like Memento Mori and the, the the integration of this memento which is memory and mori which is death and a game about memory that is called memory perfect <laughs> this this is very good very good choice on this oh wow man the whole game seems very consistent so we, everything seems to support the the game itself. So everything has the same palette, same color palette. Uh, you can see that how the way that we interact is a, a shaking hand. So it's a person near to death. I will be shaking as well. So man, everything here seems the the art direction, the art unity here. Perfect. The rules are simple. Here are some cards with different symbols. Flip the cards and match them in pairs with the same symbol. Okay, yeah, it's a game of memory, right? Now here comes the fun part. This is a death card. My death card. The only one without a pair. Yeah, so we have not nine cards here. One of them would not have a pair. You shall remember its position, you are not allowed to touch it, okay? Unless you want to come with me to Afterlife. <laughs> nice. Enjoy the game, Mortal. Okay. Okay. Good, yeah, so the sub the the sound effects give the idea that you either missed or you succeed into uh, picking a the, the correct cards. So this is very important because people usually neglect sound sound effects. Uh, and well, games are basically just systems of incentives, right? So you have to communicate through your audio the proper incentives. So this this person made a good job giving a negative feedback when I miss the card so I am punished by missing the card not only through the game the game elements but through the audio effects as well because listening to the audio effect that I missed the card is punishing you know I, I, I don't know how to explain that but the idea is that I wouldn't like to hear this sound a lot but the success sound is good to hear, so I would like to hear it more. So these are the, the two faces of this incentive, and this person managed to do this very well. I, I like the, the approach here. Maybe this time you'll be prepared. We shall see if that look. And it's very nice that the person used animations to say, Hey, this one, this card, pay attention to that, don't select it, don't interact with this. Nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. What? Oh, okay, so I have a, a mark. Yeah, you can see how well, no, oh man, okay, let's go to the to the rating. This game is very good. It's very good indeed. Let's just see how far can we go. You can see that the, the failures are being exposed in my face. You already have two uh, consecutive failures. And I've, as far as I can remember, the third one will be just the death of my character. And this is very well integrated with the game lore. So yeah, we, man, this is very well done. This person deserves uh, a high rating. 
Yeah, let's see what happens when I do that thing. Too many fall. Yeah, nothing happened. But at least the the game internal state was very well communicated. So let's start the rating. How quick did the audiovisual feedback happens upon player interaction? Very quick, I will give it a five stars. How well did the game user interface string the, the game's concept? Very well, five stars as well. How well did the game user interface stand out from other games? I think that this one stand out very, very much from the previous two ones. So I think that it will prevail on the next ones as well. So yeah, I think that since the everything seems so tightly integrated, I think that I'll, I'll give it five stars as well. How cohesive were the game user interface that is screen? Very cohesive. Everything seems to be part of a single uh, a single entity here. So yeah, five stars as well. How polished was the game user interface in other non-play, non-gameplay elements? Everything seems very well polished. So yeah. The only thing that I would would bother say is this background with this effect that is kind of annoying but not to the point of yeah I, I would just give four stars just because of this very specific thing but otherwise five stars but I will give it four so five 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 four great game because the person took a very simple concept a game of memory but it transformed well we're not judging the the lore of the game here but the person did a very well job with the whole thing the, the whole game itself so yeah very nice very nice entry all right to the next one title screen <laughs> okay game maker please stop playing <laughs> okay let's see that What happened? I did I didn't I didn't do that. Is this a, a loading screen? Didn't get it. Man, what's what happened? What is happening? Why adding a title, a loading screen if the game loads immediately? <laughs> no, I, I'm about to. This will be something interesting to do to turn the user interface into gameplay element. Well, okay, I'll give this guy a, a cre some credits for that. But overall. Now oh, what do I do? Pick that. Is it over? Well man, there's nothing not much to, to do here. Yeah, well let's start the, the rating. How quick did the audiovisual audiovisual feedback happens upon player interaction? Well, it it happens very quick. Um, yeah, I think that is the game is responsive, right? So, yeah, I'll give it five stars just because the game is, is responsive. Um, how well did the GUI user experience strengthen the game concept? I don't know what the concept of this game, for God's sake. Really enjoyed your game, man, did you? Um, uh, one star? <laughs> yeah, 
one star. Um, how well did the GUI stand out from other games? One star. How cohesive were the GUI menus and other non play game elements? So basically, the game is pretty much just user interface. So I think that this will be, yeah, very cohesive. So five stars. How well polished was the game user interface and other non-player game? Very poorly polished, so one star. This is my rating. <laughs> this game didn't make a good job. Well, man, if you saw the previous entries, it's not fair to give this game uh, a lot of attention. So yeah, let's move on to the next one. All right, the next entry is Mr. Monaco's Mysterious Manor. Well, <laughs> Let's see how this goes. Game Maker Studio 2. Good job. The puzzles are real. Oh, so it's a puzzle game. Well, let's play this one. Sir Spectacles receives a mysterious letter from Mr. Monaco. Okay. Walk through below. Oh no, spoilers. I don't I, I have no problem with spoilers but when I mean for puzzle games spoilers just messed up the whole experience so let's just play. Whoa nice Mr Monaco's mysterious manner click anywhere to begin so different from that one from the memory memory uh, game, this is very clearly saying click anywhere to continue instead of having a button. I think that I should change the the rating of the, the memory. No, I'll, I'll keep it the, that way. Click to continue. Open. Okay, we have to call in Mr. Monaco. Our hero tried to leave only to find the door. Triple <laughs> triple clock. Okay, someone really didn't want this, this Mr. Monaco or yeah, the Sir Spitakos to leave this place. Will Sir Spitakos be able to escape or will this haunted home hinder our helpless hero? So yeah, not gonna lie, I saw that the we could interact with the hug first, the rug first. First, stuck in a cage with no key. Try finding some keys on which to play cage to find what you need. Okay. Oija. Which board? This puzzle takes a one word answer. Click the letters to build the world. Click yes to submit or no to erase your answer. Ha, hello. Hello. Well, here's say goodbye, so I would say if you say goodbye, I say hello. Submit. No, yeah. Good. <laughs> well, that, that could be some sound effects to say that yeah you miss it because this was very not it, it means something so I can erase it okay oh I don't know what you do there oh nice <laughs> yeah so this uh, Highlighting of these keys It's very very good. It could be quicker Something that something like immediate like right when I hover the the key it will highlight Yeah, this I think that this will will lose some points on how quick the interface response respond to the players interaction, but let's say yeah, so when I yeah, but hovering is an interaction as well, so... Err... Uh, back. What? This puzzle takes two lines and you will... Yeah, so... 
the interface helps a lot setting the the atmosphere of the game. I think the yeah, it will. This will give some points to to this dev. I like that they focus on the interactions because this way, like this is a point point and click on a uh, game, right? So. It's a good joy. It's a good choice for this kind of challenge that we put on round five, and yeah, this person uh, made a good choice. Stuck in a cage with no key, trying to find. Oh, okay. Got it. Key. <laughs> hey, this is the key. Okay. <laughs> cage. So there could be some animations here, like if this was supposed to be a secret compartment, it, it should do something like sliding to reveal this. But yeah, let's take it. This type of puzzle may take two lines, one for GDKO and one for the current year. Two lines, yeah, two lines is, is here. So G, G. Okay. Oh, but you can see that next year this game will be <laughs> not work anymore, right? So, design-wise, so game design-wise, this was not a very good choice. Nice. Yeah, this should be more. This should pop more because these keys are very important for the gameplay. So. Yeah, I think that this needs something to really highlight it when we actually finish the the puzzle. Asking the spirits with yeah, so we can see that there are some lower and upper uh, cases here. And let's see what the what the word. I'm not even going to, to read it. Uh, these are three keys challenge. Um, I already have two, so the next one is the Oija board, right? So, yes, your spirit, spec, spec, uh, specta, spectacular, spectacle, spectacle. <laughs> okay, <laughs> got it. Is this the key already? <laughs> yeah, you can see that I didn't even realize that this key just appeared here. Yeah, so this is something that I think that this dev could definitely give more attention to. To make the key appear, the key appears more... Give more attention to that, right? So that the, the player understands that they did something that really made some progress in the game itself but yeah so let's see i like the each each uh locker seems to be themed as well as the key right so the key also has a team related to the the puzzle that uh, we we need to solve to to get it what did Sir Spendico see? Has he escaped? I don't know. What's Mr. Monaco in? Was Mr. Monaco in danger? Or it was a trap all along? Trilling. <laughs> Find out next time on the trilling. <laughs> the trilling conclusion of Sir Spectacles. Spectacular Spectacle. <laughs> Good. Okay, let's go to the rating. So. How quick did the audio-visual feedback happen upon players' interaction? Yeah, so we saw that on the on the typing machine, the writing machine, things didn't happen quite quickly. So, but otherwise, yeah, the OJA board has some... But, but this makes sense because the OJA board needs to be animated, right? So we have those this thing that goes to each key, to each letter. So... 
yeah, I'd say four stars. How well did the game user interface and user experience strengthen the game's concept? I think that the interface itself, especially the 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 effects, the this like old movie effect, really helps setting up the the theme for the game, and also the the interface itself helps a lot. Yeah, I'll give a a five as well. I'll give a five for this one. How well did the game user interface stand out from other games? Yeah, it stands out. Yeah, four. It, it was nicely done, but it's not stands out from the other entries. So a four. How cohesive were the game user interface that skin? Yeah, everything seems to be very consistent. Everything seems to be just part of a whole. So um, yeah, I'll give a five on this one. Uh, that there wasn't any inconsistencies in the interface or the experience. So yeah, definitely a five. How well polished was the game user interface and other known gameplay elements? Well, this one, as I said, could be made better, especially the keys, revealing the keys and finishing the puzzles could be something more, more polished to communicate better to the player, to emphasize that the player solved the, the puzzle. So on this one, I'll give a three stars, three stars. Yeah. Okay. To the next one. Futuristic bubble pop. Futuristic bubble pop. <laughs> nice. Uh, let me decrease the audio here. Like the other stated, the game is really fun. Okay, let's see that. Controls interact using the mouse. Okay. Run game. But so. Click to start. Oh, <laughs> man, <laughs> I really like those. Well, I don't. Yeah, so this updates with the, the mouse position. So light ring. Oh, is this the, the current date? Yeah, <laughs> very nice. Yeah, so this seems to be a. I like that the, the whole interface moves as I also interact with the, the mouse. Yeah, so settings, screen mode, normal, smooth, what does this mode do? Smooths out my movement or... Oh! <laughs> CRT man, cool! Yeah, I'll keep this one. <laughs> Music on. Color power pink. Oh, everything changes. <laughs> this is so good. This is so good. <laughs> Orange crush, mellow yellow, cool blue. <laughs> I like the the name, the color names. Tactical green, X-ray white, power pink. I think that I will go with tactical green. Man, <laughs> the option to change the color and change the whole interface color, everything. Ah, man, this is so good. Yeah, something I I didn't like is that it takes sometimes some time to build up to unsort to actually to sort out the the words for for the interface. Yeah, you can see that it takes some some time to do that. And how do I go back? Of course. Okay, how can I go back? Okay, play. can see that oh man there is uh, on the background you can see that there is those something like a highlight where my where the mouse is this is very good ah. 
I don't know if this was intentional. Yeah, but the pitch of the, the effect, so the sound effect, is matching the the pitch of the of the music. Man, this is very very interesting. Yeah, this is something that I, I, I don't remember seeing anywhere else, like the pitch of the sound effect matching the pitch of the, the background music. Very interesting, very, very interesting. Because it, it becomes quite, kind of like a rhythm game. Yeah, it's matching the, the background music pitch. Man, this is amazing. I, I really like this. Th this by itself is already good. Yeah, definitely. This is a, a good enter a good entry that paid attention to small details. Yeah, th the only thing that I would say is that let's change the color. <laughs> this is so good. <laughs> the only thing that I would say uh, on the oh man, the mellow yellow. <laughs> it's, it's so nice. <laughs> It's on regard to... How can I get out of, of the game? Well, it's on regard to the... How long it takes to actually form the words. Uh, yeah, this is the only thing that I didn't like about that. But, well, let's go to the rating. How quick did the audio-visual effect feedback happen upon player interaction? Here is where this game is going to lose one point. How quick did this audio visual how quick did the audio visual effect feedback happen upon player interaction? Yeah, here is where I'm going to take one star out of this game. Just because of how slow the the words form. So yeah, I think that I will go with four. Four stars. How well did the game user interface experience strengthen the game concept? Well, I don't know what's the, the game concept. Description which the task was to focus on UI and non-gameplay elements. Yeah, <coughs> another very intentional entry because they really didn't focus on any gameplay elements and the, the interface is very well done. So if I would take the, the stance that this game is about game user interface, it's like a showcase of a game user interface prototype, I would definitely give this game a 4 stars as well on this second um, category. How well did the game user interface stand out from other games? 5. <laughs> 5. <laughs> Straight up just 5. Because I really like the idea of changing Everything here, uh, everything in, in this game helps um, helps it it's just stand out because even just the how the interface moves as I move the the mouse and well man just yeah five how cohesive were the game user interface title screen menus and other non play elements five I really like that the the cohesive of the sound effect together with the background music how I change the color will change everything else color the whole game itself is very cohesive so yeah definitely five as well how well polished was the game user interface and other non game player non gameplay elements yeah so I think that I will give a, a four just because how the the words form when we we go to the menus but this is a kind of polish man a polish but um it it, it become a bad experience it, it, not just because you polish it that is a good experience but since this yeah four four well, let's go to the next one. I really like this 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 concept here. It's not a game by itself, but I really liked everything in this in, in this entry. 
Now up to the next one, Kronko's Dungeon. Let's see how this goes. I'm free and continually impressed by how varied you've been able to make him. Okay, so probably this will be a point and click as well. Oh, it simulates a Game Boy experience. Let's see this one. Oh, seems to be done in Grud Engine as well. Let's put this on full screen. Start. Oh, the pixel art here is top notch. After all, I don't believe. What happened? What's the context of this? Well, we are not judging the, the lower right, so let's focus on the interface. Can I click? Oh, no, because it simulates a Game Boy Color, right? So, move, inventory, pause, ac action. What's the action? Move, inspect, action, enter, shift, inventory. Peoples, okay. Until then, I'm going to keep you in a safe place. Move. Find yourself in a cell with a wooden bed. Oh, so I move just the. Interesting. Yeah, I, I never played with these before, so I never played this kind of game before, especially not with this kind of interaction. So we have, oh, okay, so you can see that the icon move, uh, changes. A strong metal door that locks from the outside. Yeah, not good, right? So, window. Outside's nice, the bars look old, but still sturdy. So this bed. Oh, you, immediately I can see that I can interact with this. Grab this, actually. You picked up the bed like nice. Press start or shift to open the items panel. Okay, bed. A hard wooden bed with no. Ma <laughs> oh man, this sucks. One of the legs looks like it can be pulled off. Okay, so. This would be what uh, the hint to take the the bad leg, right? So, okay. Hey, pile. You move the pile of free. Great. The great looks like it could be pretty open. Oh, yeah, got it. Oh man. Ah, nice. So when you select an item, it becomes the the course the cursor. The grid has been removed. You can fit into the hole. Nice. Oh, this is also very good. So when I can move to another place, to, to like load a new screen, a new room, if you will, uh, there is an arrow. Nice. Managed to miss the water. Okay. Range. You picked up the range. Oh, nice. So the, the arrow follows the, the direction of the movement. Quite, quite well done. Yeah, so you can see that now it's pointing left. Cool. So what's that? Wolf. The valve held in place be a locked chain. It's connected to the valve by a single screw. Yeah, so can, can I use the wrench there? Wrench doesn't work on valve. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I can. Door probably closed, locked. This is a top looking security door and it's locked. Okay. Note Garrett, here is your new door key. 
Stop dropping your keys in the water. I interact with the water. You wouldn't drink it, but it's not as dirty as you expected. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so the water here could be uh, could allow me to change to the other room as well. Oh, screwdriver. Oh, perfect. You picked up the screwdriver. So, yeah, we already know what to do, right? Okay, use the screwdriver to remove. The wheel fell down with the chain. The range claims something from the valve. Oh, nice. Yeah, the key, Garrett key. key. <laughs> okay, let's go there. Use the key on the door. Go unlock the door. Move. Oh, you found me. There is no trace of them. They made it out somehow. I'm pleasantly surprised and pressed Eden leave freeze. <laughs> yeah, so I I'm free. You're free, man. Okay, let's go to the rating. How quick did the audiovisual feedback happen upon player interaction? So this is simulated, right? To convey the idea that the experience of being playing this kind of game into a Game Boy but things are not smooth here uh, so on this regard i think that i will give this yeah i think that three stars just because things uh, are not quick because i have to move one 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 cell um at a time instead of just having uh the, the the speed of interacting with a mouse i understand that this is on purpose to convey the idea that you are using a game boy but this doesn't change that the the user experience may be quite frustrating in that sense so yeah three stars how well did the game user interface experience strain the game concept well it does it very well because everything supports the idea that you are a prisoner that finds out some some so this is a point and click game but you don't have a mouse but it, it, it's still a point and click and when the interface changes the, the items and the tools to convey the idea that you are currently using this uh object different from the what's the name of the other game Mag magitech which gives no cue no hint whatsoever that uh, you are selecting something with that you have something selected in your your hand hand. Uh, this one gives this very clearly. It conveys the the proper idea. So uh, I will give this one like five stars on this regard. How well did the game user interface stands out from other games? Well, it it stands out very much, especially due to the art direction. So I think that I will give it. A um, yeah, four stars is nothing. Wow, amazing and and revolutionary, but it's consistent. It is good. It stands out very cl cl clearly. <laughs> How cohesive were the game user interface status? Yeah, everything is very cohesive here. Everything makes sense. You, I don't know if you realize that, but it was very smooth once I realized how to interact with things here. So the game just f flow flows. And well, I think that the, the cohesiveness is about five stars as well. How well polished was the game user interface and other non play, non gameplay elements? I will also give it a five stars uh, because things besides the things that I talk, talked about, uh, every icon was very well uh, drawn, everything makes sense uh, as a whole. So yeah, it seems polished, uh, polished enough to, to convey the, the necessary information to for the player to take action upon it. So yeah, five stars. All right, on to the next entry, Pixel 
OS. Great OS simulator, something about this is fun to me. I did not grade. I did not grade, okay. So it, it's a quiz game? Well, let's see. Been two weeks for. Okay, the team was to focus on UI and polish. Literally everything, every single thing in the project is made by me, okay? The code for Windows, not really much going on. Yeah, <laughs> so I didn't sew this very well. But let's see how this goes. Mm. Oh, there are multiple teams here. So I, I think that this person is using the Peer 36 palette. I'm, <laughs> I use this very much. And I can see the, the scholars and immediately recognize them. So I think that I will go with... Oh, this one looks cool as well. But I think that I will go with the, the green. Yeah, the orange one. Well, what? Why the? Oh, I thought <laughs> I thought this was a checkbox. Okay. Epic cool GDKO quiz. Start. Yeah, these animations. Are I mean, things could be just smoother without animation, so... I think that it was Liu Jin, Liu Lin. Uh, who won the round 2 of GDKO? Round 2, if I'm not mistaken, was Hugbug. Okay. Oh, round 3, and, <laughs> and afterwards I didn't follow, so I don't know. Jose? Okay, <laughs> and oh wow, well, this one I'll, I'll just hug book. Okay, yeah. So this is just a quiz game. It's not not much. Well, let's go to the rating. How quick did the audio? Yeah, this one doesn't have very quickly, so you can see that I have to wait until the animation plays. I have to wait two seconds or one second until it realizes that I either failed, I failed or I succeed into the quiz question. So it this could be definitely quicker. So I think that I will give this one, I mean, I think that two stars. Yeah, two stars. How well did uh, the UI user experience and strength, uh, strengthen the game concept. I don't know what the game concept is in, in this one. I think that it's supposed to simulate a um, an OS. On that regard, I think that it just... What, what happened here? So, on regard to the user experience, how well did it strengthen the game concept? If this is supposed to be like an OS simulator, yeah, there are, there are some windows that have some animations. Well, in, on this regard, I think that I will give it a four stars. How well did the GUI stand out from other games? Yeah, I mean, not not very much. There's nothing way too cool. For instance, the the other one where we can change the whole interface and everything was cool, was better. So I think that I will give this one, yeah, three stars, three, two stars. How cohesive were the game user interface at the screen? Man? Yeah, everything is very cohesive. It just basically just works. It seems like a cohesive experience. So I think that on this regard, I'll give it a five stars. How well polished was the game user interface and other known gameplay elements? Yeah, we have some animations, but they don't help much. And I would rather just 
not have these animations especially here on the the quiz itself like waiting this much to just know if i got the answer right or not i would rather have it quicker instead of having animation so i would give this one uh, how well polished was the game user interface three stars three stars all right to the final one side effects which game okay was made in unity might really like this entry whatever stuff okay Side effects HIO page. It's all in your head. It's double ASD. It's up, left, down, and right. Okay. I never found it. <laughs> yeah, not very good. A game about user interface, and someone commented that they didn't find the why. Run the game. Where's the UI? Where's the UI, man? <laughs> okay. Okay. E? I can't hear anything. Side effects. Whatever. Side effects. You might see numbers in your corner of your eyes. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, this is a cool concept. So as far as I could understand, we are going to build the the interface as we played. So there, there was this game, I don't remember the, the game, that was about DLCs that you, you should collect some coins in the game and you should pay to buy some DLCs. And to have like user interface, to have like dialogue boxes and other stuff. Uh, and I think this meta concept is always a good approach to things. So I really like this, the concept of this entry. Why is the table on, on, on the ceiling now? E. Side effect, you might want to put things on pause. Okay. B. Oh man, it's so trippy. <laughs> Back. Will this P be popping from now on? It's so annoying. Side effect, you might see options that you don't really have. Whatever. <laughs> what are the, the options? Oh, probably it's a pause menu, right? So, options, yeah. Oh nice. Well I can I can hear the why can't I... okay nice nice Yeah I like the, the animations here. This one makes sense, right? Yeah I think that will I'll go with this one. <laughs> Back. Man, it's so trippy. Side effects. Yeah, we are in the club, guys. You might start taking credit for things you never did. Whatever. Things you never did. Well, man, this is not cool. Programming. Paint and game. Unity, everything was made with unity, guys. Many coffees, not sleeping. <laughs> okay. So, e, you might want to quit. Whatever. Yeah, let's quit this. I should. Yeah. What? What, what are you going to do? Close my browser? <laughs> no, there's no way, right? Yeah. So let's rate this entry as well. So how quick did the audio visual feedback happens? Yeah, I think with this one was, besides the animations, uh, things actually happened, happened quite quickly. I really like this trippy background, man. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, so yeah, four stars. 
how well did the game user interface experiences its strength? Well, this game is all about interface and it, well, yeah, five stars, five stars on this one because the game is about user interface and the interface appears as we, you play. So I think that this concept integrates really well. How well did the game user interface stand out from other game user interface? Um, it doesn't stand out very much, but yeah, I liked it besides the <laughs> clear little effort that this person did here. It is efficiently, it, it actually conveys the, the right idea. Things are clearly uh, clear to read. So yeah, I think that I will go with four stars on this one. Uh, how cohesive were the game user interface settings? I think it's cohesive. I think it seems to be, as I said, part of the same thing, of the same concept. I think it seems to fit well together. So, yeah, I think that I will go with four stars as well. Five stars. Five stars on this one. How well polished was the game user interface and other non-gameplay elements? Polished? Um, well, w everything is very well done, it pops, it, an it animates, uh, everything seems to be alive here, but for the lack of effort in actually making something prettier, I will give four stars. Four stars because everything seems to fit together and, uh, well, yeah, four stars. With that, I end up my rating for the GDKO 2024 round five submissions. I hope you enjoyed and see you in the next round.